I'm Larry, and you're watching UAV TV. Today we're reviewing the X930 Octocopter Frame from Hobby King. The very same frame we used on our Octocopter that crashed in our previous video. And stay tuned, because we're giving this frame away. Today's video, we're reviewing this X930 Octocopter frame from Hobby King. It comes in this really nice box, and we're going to go ahead and unbox it and show you what's inside it right now. Now, we built an Octocopter with this very same frame, so we're really well versed in it. We know the pros and the cons, and we'll let you know what they all are. Everything comes pretty well packed up. You can see that this is the, the base plate, the top plate, and also the landing gear. And these are the motor mounts. Now, I had a problem with these motor mounts in that one of my motors broke off and gave me a pretty gnarly cut, so I do not recommend using these. And we'll show you what to use as a replacement for those. But it comes with all the screws that you need, all the standoffs. If that's going to meet your needs, these will actually get the octocopter built and you'll be able to fly it with everything that's in here as long as you get your motors and ESCs and whatever flight control you decide to use. Okay, now the frame comes with aluminum arms. I'm going to go ahead and set this box aside now. Now these aluminum arms are pretty strong, okay? And as you know, we've mentioned in our previous video, we, we showcased the octocopter crashing. That was pilot error, okay? My pilot error, actually. But the truth of the matter is, is in a crash, these are not very stout, okay? They are going to bend. They're not carbon fiber, they're not really resilient, they're going to bend. So you have to kind of be careful with this octocopter as you land it, because I'll tell you what, the landing gear that comes with the octocopter is made of fiberboard, and it's quite flimsy. And these are the legs that make up the landing gear. And as you can see, they're, they're slotted like that to slide into the base plate and the top plate. And as they sandwich together, they form the octocopters center section. Now these were pretty hard to slide in last time and we'll try it again. But uh, this is what basically the design is all about. It goes on there like that. But you can see when it's sitting on the ground, if you'll watch this, it's very wobbly. And the octocopter is incredibly wobbly. So I don't really like the landing gear. Now if you look up here, you can see that we made a modification using aluminum square tubing about the same size as this rivets and uh, some rubber standoffs on the bottom and it, uh, it did a whole lot better job. It's much more stable when it's on the ground. You still have to be very careful when you're landing it. The octocopter that we built using the components we'll show you sh shortly does a really good job of landing softly. So it's really easy to control, easy to fly, no big deal. There's lots of room on the base plate to put everything you need to in this octocopter. <clears throat> Our Racer Star brushless motors. Okay, we'll we'll go ahead and we'll we'll go through those in a minute when we finish this uh, unboxing video. But basically, it's really self-explanatory when you go to put this thing together because there are no instructions. <laughs> it's just you're going to be putting the top on. One thing that we found is that we had to trim these tabs on the top to get them to snap into the top plate. That was a big problem. So once we trimmed them and we shimmed them and we uh, sanded them up a little bit, we were able to get them in. And once you get them in, then this thing becomes pretty stout. And that's about how thick it's going to be. You can put some little components down inside here, all your wiring, possibly your uh, power distribution board. That's what we used it for. Our power distribution boards go down in here. And uh, we use these landing gear as our battery holders because they have, as you can see, these slots right here. On these slots, sit these plates and these plates allow you to go ahead and uh, anchor your your battery right to it so you, we have the same problem that we had on ours is that these aren't really well cut so they're really hard to snap on there but once you get them on there they work pretty well so but this becomes your battery tray and it also has these small feet that are adjustable for depending on what size battery you want to use 
can go to the lowest setting or you can come to the, the intermediate or the highest setting, either one depending on your battery. And when that's snapped in there, it gives you a base plate to set your battery on and then you put your battery straps in these two slots and hold your battery in place. And it worked out pretty well. The only problem we have with it is it's very flimsy. Even when it's all completely put together and built, when the legs are on the bottom, they snap in down here. It's still incredibly flimsy. So we didn't like that aspect of the, of the copter at all. But other than that, we had really good success with the octocopter frame. The motors and everything else are in good spacing and the arms work really good. It's really easy to assemble. Each of the arms is pre-drilled so you don't have to mess with any of that stuff. It comes with all the screws you need. These long screws actually go through the top plate. You insert your leg, you insert your leg here. It's very visible from altitude. You can see this really easily. So I really like this part about the, the octocopter's frame. But I, I, we put ours here. We had both of them coming out the same place. And uh, the bolts go all the way through. So it makes a sandwich out of the top plate and the bottom plate when you put your bolts in there and it really strengthens this whole part of the frame. I mean, I can't say enough good about the base plate, the top and bottom plates, and the arms and how they all tie everything together really tightly. It works really nicely. The only problem I had was the landing gear. So basically, it's very simple to build. You can build this frame in about a half an hour. And uh, all in all, we're real happy with our frame. We actually bought another one. And uh, we used the components out of that other frame to repair the octocopter that we crashed. Now, to go through some of these things that we put on it, we'll go ahead and leave a link for each one of these components down in the description. So if you want to go and use the same stuff we did, you can. But uh, this is one of the motors from Racer Star. They're fairly inexpensive. We ended up going with a DJ NASA M, and uh, it's a phenomenal board. It made all of this possible. The octocopter is incredibly stable. It's easy to fly. It has plenty of selections. You have GPS mode. You have altitude hold. You have GPS lock, so you can lock in position up there. It does kind of waver in about a three-foot circle at altitude but it will hold its altitude really, really well. Made it possible for us to do the science fair project for Joe and uh, before we crash it, of course. Now this Racer Star motor is a BR3508 and it swings a 12 inch, a 12.6 prop. And uh, that's what we have on our octocopter. We use six, I mean eight uh, 12 inch, eight by six props. And those will be down in the description as well really has a tremendous lifting capability and the frame is, is up to the task. We put a really big battery on this thing. The uh, multi-star six cell batteries and it's huge. So as you can see right here this is a picture of it and uh, it's heavy as well but it's still even with that battery on it it gave us almost a half an hour flight times and could still lift 15 pounds so it's, it's pretty amazing. So if, you, if you're wanting to get into a, an octocopter and you don't want to spend a tremendous amount of money we do recommend this frame from Hobby King. We recommend you use these Racer Star motors. Get your ESCs from Hobby Wing, as we mentioned earlier. Make sure they're two to six cell, and you should find that you'll have no problem assembling this, this uh, octocopter, and it'll do everything that you're hoping it'll do. The only problem we mentioned earlier are these. Now, these are the motor mounts that come with it, and they're made out of fiberboard as well. Now, this motor is capable of generating quite a few RPM on a six cell battery. And that means it's going to generate quite a bit of lift, so it's going to be pulling really hard against this fiberboard motor mount. Now this goes on top, this little plate goes on the bottom, a bolt goes through and sandwiches it, and it holds it on there. And it worked okay as long as we weren't doing anything very violent. The problem with these is, is like I said, when one of them broke, it snapped and it almost cut the tendon in my thumb. Not a very good day for me. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to open these up, but there they are. Look at that. They're really nice, and they're made out of really strong, high tensile strength aluminum, so they don't bend really easy. And they've got slots in them for the motor, so they'll fit just about any motor you want to put on here. As you can see, it's already pre-drilled. It's slotted for the motor. It'll fit just about any motor you want to put on here. 
it works really, really well and it's very, very strong. It'll give you a much greater feeling of security when you're flying your octocopter because there's eight spinning propellers on this thing. Make sure you understand and know what you're, uh, you're working with before you go out to try and fly it. Now the Nausea M controller that we mentioned earlier, is, as far as octocopter controllers go, it's pretty in inexpensive. Still costs a lot of money, but it's still, as, as controllers go, it's inexpensive and it's very, very effective. It does a really good job. We uh, damaged our first one in the crash and the second one we got works just as good as the first one we had. We're very, very happy with the Nasa M. Kudos to DJI for their product. It's really, really good. Now, I can't say enough about this octocopter frame. It's a really good frame. It's done exactly what we hoped it would do. It's very inexpensive and uh, we're pretty happy with it. So we'll let give a little shout out to Hobby King for uh, producing it because it's hard to find octo frames, honestly, that were inexpensive. But uh, any of the components that we've mentioned, We'll, uh, you'll find them in the, in the description below. All the links will be there for you. And uh, if you want to make the same octocopter we did, I guarantee you it'll work really, really well. Now remember, we're giving away this octocopter frame. We're also going to include a set of these motor mounts so that you won't have to bother with ordering those. You can just put these on right away and your octocopter will be that much safer. And also, we'd like to let you know that there are some rules to the giveaway. You have to be subscribed you have to leave us a comment and just leave us one because the software will kick your name out if you leave two. One comment only and that way you'll be entered into the drawing and whoever wins that drawing the software will notify us as to who it is and we'll mail this out to you right away. So again thanks for watching our video and have a great rest of your day.